do not deny that my heart has greatly desired this. Please, a dark lord, you would have a queen! Not dark, but beautiful and terrible as a lord! Hi everybody! Hi no guys! Hi. So we wanted we felt like we had a good morning. We were happy and then we felt we just, we want to get angry a little bit. So we decided to watch uh, Dan and Dave's Inside the Episode, Episode 5, and react to it. But before I do that, I want to give a shout out to patron and friend, Betsy Lace. She sent me this. Look at this press. It's just a little bit too small, so it doesn't fit. But it's made with dragons. Oh, and she made wow. it herself. Thank you, Betsy. Very nice. Are you? It's me. Okay. This is it. Okay. <laughs> this is a gift. Okay, so are you ready to get mad? <coughs> Let's see how those two <coughs> geniuses explain their episode. Danny's an incredibly strong person. She's also someone who has had really close friendships and close advisors for her entire run of the show. You look at those people who have been closest to her for such a long time and almost all of them have either turned on her or died and she's very much alone. And that's a dangerous thing for someone who's got so much power to feel that isolated. So at the, at the very time when she needs guidance and those kind of close friendships and advice the most, uh, everyone's gone. Okay. It was me. Goodbye, old friend. Drakkar. The boom call confirmed. I said that uh, Varys will burn. We both said that. But then I said that there will be kind of an uh, opposite yeah. thing of what happened in the trial where mm -hmm. uh, Varys testified against uh, Tyrion and now Tyrion will testify against Varys. Boom called it confirmed. And the virus will understand. And the, uh, the amount of guilt that he feels over being the cause for his best friend's imminent death, it's hard to really get your head around. Aren't you supposed to get your head around it if you write uh, the story? Yeah. I'm not even mad, I'm just sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have love here. I only have fear. Jon Snow is someone that she's fallen in love with, and as far as she's concerned, by this point, Jon has betrayed her by telling people about his true identity, and also the fact that he's unable to return her affections at this point. Why is he unable to return yeah, her affections? Yeah, they didn't explain it. Like, we don't know, I mean, we don't know why. I mean, there are so many different reasons why he could lose his affection towards her right now, because she's his aunt. That's for Yeah, it was. Because, uh, but they didn't, they didn't talk about that no. once. He, I, it, we don't know. I mean, uh, it's... Maybe they'll explain. Okay, maybe. I think they probably won't. I think that when she says, let it be fear, she's resigning herself to the fact that she may have to get things done in a way that isn't pleasant. He says, I think. Yeah, it's very, you know, <laughs> the characters, you know, they act on their own. We have no control <laughs> over it. They just write themselves down. We're just, you know, we're channeling them from like this, you know, fantasy land. And it was very, very clear that when she said, let it be fear, she was planning the next day to destroy the city. So it wasn't, so it's like, I think on the one hand, you should know, not think. How can you write a character and not know what, what, what you're writing? And on the other hand, it's like very clear that this is what it is and you shouldn't say, I think. She chose violence. A Targaryen choosing violence is a pretty terrifying thing. If Cersei hadn't betrayed her, if Cersei hadn't executed Misenday. Misenday? <laughs> oh my goodness, this is the most annoying thing. <laughs> so what the fuck? What the fuck is Misenday? <laughs> Aren't you watching how your characters <laughs> pronounce that name? Nobody said Misenday. <laughs> I never heard it in my life. Misunday. He's like the zombie giant. Zombie giant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they, you know, they pull up the, the cardboard. Misunday. What? No. It's in that moment on, on the walls of King's Landing when she's looking at that symbol of everything that was taken from her when she makes the decision to, to make this personal. We 
said a lot of shit about, uh, not you maybe, about Emilia Clark. I thought that that was good. She yeah. played it good. I think and she's a good She one. was. Yeah, but she didn't go and destroy the Red Keep. She went and yeah. just burned people. Like carpet bombing, carpet burning the yeah. people. That wasn't justified, not only like in the moral sense, it was just what wasn't justified in the episode. You're like, no, why are you doing this? If she would have gone and just burned the entire Red Keep, that would have been horrible enough. Mm -hmm. And would have given Cersei a better death. We wanted her to be just death from above as seen from the perspective of the people who are on the business end of that dragon. In, in most business large... Business end? What does it mean? Like? What is he's it? the guy from... He's the zombie giant guy. He doesn't yeah. know what he's writing. <laughs> the business end yeah. of the dragons. Okay. Oh, yes. Thank you for your insight, uh, D. <laughs> Stories like this. I think that John is also in a kind of denial. Kind of I denial. think. Why does he think all the time? <laughs> Please don't think, D. You know, this is the, what happens when you think. Right. Am I going mad? Or did the word think escape your lips? I think John is someone who's always been a very good soldier. I think for him, it all starts out seeming like it's going to work out. You are not hired for your brains, you hippopotamic landmass! When she takes off and starts burning the city, the Unsullied on the ground and the Northmen on the ground take that as their cue. This is just like an editing gripe. Look at his lips. I think it was uh, spliced together here. Starts burning the city, the Unsullied city, the Unsullied oh, sullied on the it? ground and the Northmen no. on the ground. It was like two sentences uh, uh, put together. It wasn't a straight sentence. Look at his lips, it starts with an M. This is just yeah. like whatever the editor in me is. It has nothing to do with anything, but look at his uh, lips. It starts with an M when he doesn't say M. The city, the unsullied. You're the editor, so you, you notice these things more. The good guys are behaving like the bad guys, <sighs> and the bad guys in the shot are the ones who are doing all of these horrific things. Okay, so the good guys in this episode behaved like the bad guys. This is what you might have not noticed when she burned the entire city. It's very annoying because uh, because it's so different than what uh, George R. R. Martin used to do, of having complex uh, characters that are both this and that. Now it's either this or that, you know? It's right. not both this and that, it's either right. or. It's right. like either you're bad or you're good. Oh, is he bad or is he good? No, I mean, you know. Right, this is like WWE or something. Right, like, exactly. Now we decide that this is the, the Randy Man, Savage, yeah. whatever, has to be the bad guy. Yeah, and suddenly Cersei is all vulnerable and, you know, she cares about is her baby. Oh. and uh, Yeah. No, it, it's crying. just like, it, it's so simplistic. It's right. very annoying. And know? she started the episode like really like like the bad guy right mm -hmm. no we don't want to retreat no it will be fine and then oh we have to retreat <laughs> yeah <laughs> right and then, yeah and then they started vulnerable and then mm -hmm. they just like looked at each other okay let's switch roles now okay one two three and i think this is kit harrington just like looking at doing all of these what the fuck around him is happening <laughs> <laughs> If you could describe the season finale of Game of Thrones in one word, how would you describe it? Disappointing. <laughs> Disappointing? <No. laughs> For himself, or epic. In his own life. Or epic. One of those words. No, epic. I don't epic. know. One of those ones. Two words. Disappointing. And then just like the simplistic way when he just goes and says, I want to save this one woman. One woman, I'm going to save one woman. Everybody's killing everybody. No, one woman. This is very basic storytelling. I'm going to kill her. The road to vengeance always ends in one place, which is what the Hound is saying to her here. I've made my choice a long time ago, and this could only end in one possible way for me. But for you, you have so many other options. Look at me! You want to be like me? I want to contrast that to their scene in season four. No fire! Also written by those two douches. Right. When he's telling her what happened to him with his brother. Shut up about it. Shut up about everything. So understated. 
this scene. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. He shot from behind. You can barely see his face. When she offers to clean up the wound, he just like nodded. Let me wash it out and help you sew it up at least. And then you contrast it with that. And he knows that if she comes with him at this point, she's not going to make it out of there. And we, we you saw the episode. Sandor. Thank you. I think uh, Arya here is thanking uh, Clegane. Yeah. I think she knows that they're not going to see each other again. No, no, no. No, this is actually more complex. It, more, even more, <laughs> like, just a little bit more, but it's much more in, like... <laughs> We knew that these two were going to die together um, at each other's hands, and we knew that the hound's death had to be a death by fire. So the one thing stronger in the hound than his fear of fire is his hatred of the person who put that fear there in the first place. It's a bit like uh, what you said about uh, the internalized uh, uh, object, you know, that uh, uh, Gregor has now internalized. I mean, if you want to kill- Into the hound. Into the hound, so if you want to kill the internalized object, you have to also kill yourself. I mean, it's so ingrained, it's so deep inside. There's no other way to kill it, so it's right. symbolic, like you said. Right, right. Killing the outer brother, the, the, the brother and the inner brother at the same time. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and yourself, because yeah. now... Because inside. Yeah, it's in inseparable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The reason we decided to follow Arya out of King's Landing and to, to see the fall of King's Landing through her eyes, so if we saw a lot of extras running around on fire and buildings falling apart, it might have been visually interesting, but it wouldn't have had much of an emotional impact. But when you're there on the ground with Arya, who's one of the people we care the most about, then everything takes on that much more of an edge. So this fucking douchey fellow, when people D. were... This is, this is D? I thought it was the other D. Yeah. So when people got upset about Sansa getting raped, he was like, Nobody said anything when an extra was getting raped. Oh, are you hypocrites? This is just storytelling. Mm -hmm. Now he says it himself. Once he goes through the various exits and they're all clogged up with rubble and there's no way out and he knows there's no way out, he's just trying to calm down the woman he loves because he knows this is it. Look at me! Look at me! This is like, you know, there's uh, in football, whatever, soccer, mm -hmm. you have this kind of uh, commentary where like the commentator, when there's a replay of the goal, he just explains exactly what you see. Uh, look at Messi, at Messi going left, shooting that shot, and it goes in past the goalkeeper. This is mm -hmm. this commentary. Mm -hmm. hey, just yeah. look at me. I think Jamie, by the end of episode five, has come to terms with who he really is. And he may not be happy with who he really is, but he knows he's not. He knows what matters to him, and Cersei says what matters to him. Why? Why has he come to terms with it? When did that happen? When he came to terms with it? Yeah. His, oh, his entire arc is redeeming. It's the uh, arc of redemption. No, no. But then it's just like, meh, I'm gonna go back. <laughs> yeah, gonna go just back. gonna regress back to, you know. <laughs> yeah. In two episodes. Yeah. An entire eight seasons, then I got, meh, and just go back. I feel that now I have less of a visceral reaction as I did when we watched, like, the you know, the, behind the episode two episodes ago. Now it's more like this kind of like, I came to terms <laughs> with everything. And you know, I have like all my kinds of like cerebral reactions, but nothing really visceral in that sense. Maybe I've developed a kind of like indifference, I don't know. So we're gonna, we're gonna do after the season, we're gonna do all kinds of uh, reviews and we're yeah. gonna psychoanalyze, put the viewers on the couch yeah. and explain and whatever, go through our traumas <laughs> and maybe try to heal a little bit. And you know what I want to do something? Yeah. I want to put D&D on the couch. I think that our on the couch videos are a great exercise in empathy. And just because I really don't want to feel any empathy for those two douches, I feel like it would be a really interesting exercise is to try and go through their traumas and see everything from their eyes. We'll probably talk about their very complex relationships with the... With their small penises? Well, I was thinking more about George R. R. Martin and like the audience ah. and like the fandom. Ah, okay. But... Um, but okay. Yeah. yeah, we can talk about that. We, we can talk about... Penises also, that's okay, you know, whatever. It's okay? Yeah, in psychoanalysis we talk about it all the time. 
Okay, okay. So if you want to not miss our penis videos, <laughs> please be sure <laughs> to subscribe. And if you like penises, either your own or other people's penises, then you should hit like, I think. Yeah. Uh, so we just lost the <laughs> asexual and the lesbian uh, <laughs> vote. I mean, lesbians can love penises, just not, you know, what's attached to them. Ah, okay. Penises I can take off. Is yeah. That what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah everybody penises. can love a penis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like pens, everything is phallic. If you like f stuff that is uh, that is phallic, please hit. Everybody like. loves something phallic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, I think we just like uh, <laughs> adapted the, our level of conversation <laughs> to this to the level of commentary. So thank you everybody for watching. There's a lot of cool videos about stuff that is way more interesting than this uh, episode coming up about Captain America, uh, father archetype in movies, uh, the Truman Show, we're watching the philosophy videos. Boom, 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 boom. And also there's the special offer on Patreon. If you want to come on the podcast and talk to me, with me, about the season, you can rant, you can explain why you liked it, what you like, what you didn't like, all kinds of themes that maybe are not discussed enough. Go, on, go to patreon.com slash gotacademy. All the patrons who by June 3rd are on the $10 tier or above will be invited on the podcast for a 20-minute conversation that I will then post on the podcast. So I'll take two podcast conversations and then put them together for one episode. So check that out. Thank you everybody for watching. See you all next time. Bye. Bye. I don't know if you've heard about the book, The Thrones Effect, how Game of Thrones conquered pop culture. This is a vast collaboration with several other YouTubers to look at the Game of Thrones phenomenon from all kinds of different angles to get a better sense of how it has become this cultural titan and how it has impacted our culture we take a look from a political point of view a historical point of view psychoanalytical point of view we take a look at martin's inspirations at the independent media that has grown organically from youtubers and from the audience we pick apart the different arcs the way that the story deals with magic the different ways that you can read and watch the same story. All of this in one book. Once you read the whole thing, you get an all-encompassing look about the story to better appreciate it, to lengthen the Game of Thrones experience as the show is winding down. And the link is in the description. You can get it on ebook. You can get it as an audiobook. Boom. And you can get it as a print book. It is already a number one bestseller in Amazon in several categories. It's a great read. I also edited this book, so I read all the chapters beforehand, and they are fun to read. They're also funny, insightful. You're gonna have a great time reading the whole thing. Hopefully you like my chapter two about the historical and political side and the chapter that I collaborated with Noga on, on the psychoanalytical side. So check out the links in the description. Get your The Thrones Effect book today.